specifically getting ready to migrate our data into SOLIDWORKS PDF. Uh, this is a, a pretty complex topic, if I'm being honest. There are a lot of ways that you can kind of go with this. So we want to talk about preparing you for this migration. Uh, I'll get into my topic list here in a second, but uh, just very quick recap from Mike King. Uh, I'm Mitt Sweeney. I'm an application engineer on the CATI side, and we, we focus on the solutions team, the team that Mike and I are on, on PDM, and specifically DriveWorks is my is one of my other tools. But when we talk about PDM, we want to talk about getting our data into PDM because you can have the greatest system in the world, but if it doesn't do anything with your files, then it's not really doing you much good. So what we're going to do is we'll talk about a migration. And to start off, I'm going to explain what is a migration? What kinds of things happen in a migration? Then we'll jump into the details of the migration specifically, what should you bring in your migration? There's there's the whole little, little children's game, like I'm going on a picnic, what should I bring? We're gonna do a migration, what should we bring? That's what we'll address in this case. Then I'm gonna talk about your data and specifically if your data is good. I'm not calling your baby ugly when I ask if your data is good, but it is important that you have clean data. So that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit and, and things that we want to address for that. Then we want to talk about the final prep for migration. What can you do last minute to kind of give yourself the best chance at having this migration go well? Then we'll talk about actually during the migration, what should you be doing as a user? What can you do to ensure that this migration is going smoothly and that you're doing your work the way that you need to be doing it, even while your files are quote unquote offline. And finally, we'll talk about validation. There's a whole thing with validation of, you know, we could do the greatest thing in the world. At least we could think so, but then you might check and say, hey, something didn't happen the way we expected it, or this is the way we said we wanted it, but now that we go through and look at it, you know what, maybe we need to change how we approach this. It happens. So that's kind of what we'll talk about today and where we can go with that. So first, what is a migration? And kind of like the old school version of a migration would be go into a file room and you make copies of those files and then you take those copies somewhere else. So that's kind of why I've got these boxes here. If you look at it, you can say, I'm migrating my files, making copies and moving them over. It's the same idea inside of SOLIDWORKS PDM. We're bringing over or copying data from some external source. Now that could be workgroup PDM. If you're still on workgroup PDM, please let us know. We'll get you off of workgroup. Uh, it might be a network drive. It might be an external PDM system, who knows? But it's getting your information, getting your files and the associated data from wherever it is right now and putting that into either PDM standard or PDM professional. It does not actually make a difference for where we're gonna be putting the, these files, which system, it only is gonna change what we can do once these files are in the system. But PDM, it can be as simple as just dragging your files in. That's all it has to be. They are copies. I've said that a couple of times and I say that because everybody asks, well, hey, are, are we gonna still have access to the old files? Like, what if we still need them? What, what if we have some legacy data we don't necessarily wanna always bring with us? And that's okay because we are just copying these files. We're not going to delete them because A, that's very irresponsible to just delete your data. And B, we do test migrations. We're not gonna do this all in one shot. We're gonna do this as let's see how it goes, make any tweaks, make any modifications that we find might be a little bit falling short. So we'll make the copies so that we can then go back and say, okay, here's what we have to adjust. Migrations also consist of mapping your files into different workflows, into different lifecycle states, you could think of it that way, as well as mapping their custom properties into your data cards. What I mean by that is we've got files that are in different parts of their lifecycle, whether you use PDM or not, this is something that you're probably very familiar with. Well, these files are work in progress. These files are released or approved. We want those files to go into their proper lifecycle. They might be organized by folder right now, but that's not how we do it inside of PDM, not necessarily at least. So we can do that. If you say this whole folder is work in progress, this whole folder, is approved, well, then we'll do that. We'll set those up that way. For your custom properties, thinking about things like your description, your vendor, uh, your material, your cost, things like that that are associated to your part. Well, if we're consistent with how we name things and how we label them inside of SOLIDWORKS, we can take that information, read it into our data cards, just giving us easier access to our files. We don't have to open up the file to read the description. Instead, we can just select it and view the description right there. So this poor guy's got a question, what on earth do I need to migrate? And this is a question that a lot of you would likely ask me in a, in a discovery call, you know, what should we migrate? Or the, the better, I think the question that I hear more often is people say, I have these files, but should I bring this instead? Should I also bring this? And the only way I can really answer the question of what should you bring is what files are important to you? 
What are the files that you need today, that you need right now on day one to do your job effectively? That's gonna be your first question. So if you need every file that is on your J drive, then those are the files that you should bring. If you need everything on the J drive and the K drive, well, okay, then we need to do two migrations. We need to bring all of those files from both locations. That leads into where are these files? We need to be thinking about that as we think about what should we be bringing? And the reason for that is we need to start thinking about what can we bring, specifically the file history. Um, when we think about how we do our file history, if you're coming from an existing PDM system, you've got it easy, generally. Uh, those versions and those revisions are already tracked by that PDM system. However, if you're using just a network drive, like I said, the J drive, the K drive, you might have different ways of doing this. Case in point, I grew up going to the computer lab to do projects in, in like elementary school and middle school. When I did that and I wanted to maintain my history, not knowing what a PDM system was, and I was 12, so I couldn't have used one anyway, uh, I would have to go through and I would add like a dash one, a dash two, a dash A, a dash B, so that I could have these older visions and go back and look at it. Well, I just listed two different scenarios. So what if I do dash one and Mike does dash A? Well, that's gonna change how we do our history. So we need to think about what can we bring? We need consistent history names. So the more consistent our users are, the more we can bring with us. That's our file history. But we also wanna think about the workflow history. Maybe in some database, you track when you approve your files. We use Salesforce for a lot of things. And in Salesforce, you can kind of track when things are requested, when things are delivered. It's the same idea here. When was this file first created? Well, we might have that noted somewhere because that's when the order was received. When was this file sent to approved? Well, we might have that as well because that's when we shipped the, the document or whatever. We might want to track that. We might want to map that in. So that's something that we could also bring with us if we can, if we want to. We also want to think about, is this data external to the physical file? Things like I just talked about where we have this information about when was something delivered, when was something approved, when was something uh, requested. That's metadata. That's information that describes our files. We might have that in an external database. We might have it in a CRM system. Anything is okay, but understanding where is that data and do we want to bring that over into PDM? It's another part of the migration. So understanding that stuff as we think about doing this migration, we need to understand what we want to do. We need to understand the information about the files, what can we bring, and what files we're going to bring. Now to the, is your baby ugly question, which the answer is, of course not, absolutely not. But do you have clean data? There's a phrase that we use with PDM, and I, I swear to you guys, we don't get paid by how many times we say this, but it's a very apropos phrase. PDM is a garbage in, garbage out system. What I mean by that is that if I have a file with 10 broken references and I migrate that file into PDM, guess what? I probably am still going to have 10 broken references because what PDM is going to do is not fix broken references, but it's going to maintain my existing references. So I don't have to worry about moving my files once they're in PDM, but until they're in PDM, we need them as clean as they can be. So we need to look out for things like our broken references. That's a great first example. Uh, we need to go through and try to clean those up as best we can, or at least understand what happened there so that we have a plan going forward for how we want to clean these up. We also want to consider our file paths. Think about this. If I have a, a part, it's called part1.sldprt, and I store it on my desktop. Well, that file path is C users, my name, and then desktop, and then uh, part1.sldprt. That's 35, 40 characters probably. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. But what if I then have a folder for projects and then for a particular customer and then for a particular quote and then for a particular line item? You can see where this is going to get really, really deep. The deeper your folder structure, the more problems it could potentially introduce. When we're talking about moving files into PDM, we want to make sure that our file path lengths, so that num the folders there that I just talked about, those really should be less than 230 characters. We also need to think about our duplicate files. And this one comes up often because people will ask the questions, okay, well, we have duplicate files. Well, which ones are we gonna keep? You, you choose, how can we choose? So we need to understand which ones do you want to keep? And you might have a bit of logic and just say the file that was last saved with that name. Okay, easy enough. But we wanna understand what do you want to do with that? Also, if we're gonna remap these references, well, what if one file actually was referencing something else? Is it going to break our mates? Is it gonna break our references? things to understand, things to think about, things that really we want to try to get that cleaned up 
as we prepare to do our migration. And the consistent file location. So if you think about where your files are, so I said that I have part one.sodprt on my desktop. Well, maybe Mike has an assembly that references that part on his desktop. And what if John, if there's a John in here, if there's a John that has the drawing file stored on the server, that's where he put it. Well, that's now three different locations that we'd have to migrate data from. So consolidating all that information into one location so that then we can just say, take everything from the J drive that I've kind of mentioned a few times. Let's only migrate the data that is currently there and move that into PDM. Having one location is easy. What can you do to understand this? Well, when we're preparing for migration, it's important that we scan this data, that we review this data. You might have a small data set, which makes it easy for you. You might go through a couple main assemblies. Yep, these are the ones we're going to migrate. Easy enough. But if you've got 100,000 files, you can see where this gets difficult, or at least where this gets very time consuming. We have a scan tool. Uh, this is, I'm going to prop up our fantastic team that handles migrations. We've got a scan tool. So if you want to talk to us about your migrations and say, I don't know if my data is good. It's a really common thing where you can say, I assume it is, but I don't know. We've got scan tools that we can run as part of just the discovery process and say, let's find out what your data looks like. We can understand your references, understand your file paths, find your duplicates, not only by file name, but also by file content, which is really cool. And we can say, where are those files that are broken? So we look for a broken reference and say, here's where we expect it, but it's not there. It's kind of cool. So we understand that this is that subsection of files. We, we've gone from boxes of folders to just the folders to now it's these folders that we want to migrate. What can we do to prepare for this migration? And the very first thing you can do is take those scan results or take the results of your investigation into your files by hand and go through and start fixing that. So start finding your broken references, understanding what that means. Maybe people are just referencing a local version of the toolbox. That's a really common thing. Well, in that case, Let's change those references to look for the toolbox that's going to be put into the vault because we can use PDM to manage that, that toolbox. Let's just do that. Another thing you can do, and this is kind of a little bit underrated, is get your servers as close as possible to each other. Now, in some cases, that's not possible. You might have a physical server in Melbourne, Australia, and you're migrating to a physical server in Paris, France. It's not a lot we can do with that, but ensuring that we have the best connection possible and getting these as close to each other means that we're going to have the best chance of success. Speaking about that physical connection between the servers, making sure it's a stable connection as well. If, you've got, if you have a dial-up connection, I'm sorry, it's going to take some time to do this migration. But if you've got access to fiber and you can get it on a faster network, maybe you've got two networks and they're hooked up to separate connections, put them on the fastest network you can, making sure that people are going to stay off of that network as much as you can so that we know that's going to be a stable connection because if there's a network blink, Anybody that's ever moved files and had it blink knows that can lead to problems. So we don't want that. We want to have a stable, clean connection between our servers. So while we are doing the migration, what can you be doing during that migration to ensure that we're going to have the best chance of success? Well, the first, the first step is getting the people in the room to help us get this migration started. So at the beginning of this migration, as we're getting ready to kick it off, we want IT to be in the room. Make sure that we've got access to the servers, make sure that the remote desktop is set up, uh, making sure that you have, making sure that we have the appropriate access so that we can actually grab these files and migrate them the way that we've talked about doing. We also need to make sure that the administrators in the room, because we need to be able to log into the vault. We need to be able to make sure that everything's going to map properly and that, that the administrator is there to talk to us about the overall plans going forward. But once this migration starts, they can leave the room. And in fact, once the migration starts, the best thing you can do is to stay out of your own way. And that sounds harsh, but the hardest thing to do is I'm moving my files. I have to take my hands off the keyboard and I see it all the time because I record a lot of videos and I work with a lot of our team recording videos. It's really hard to just sit there and watch your computer. People move their mouse all the time. People click on stuff. It's tricky. But as the last bullet there says, the last main bullet, it takes time. Migrations take time to run, so let it run. And these migrations can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days. And obviously there are exceptions on either side of that spectrum, but it takes some time to do this because we are moving a lot of files from one location to another. So what can you do while that happens? Instead of just sitting there and saying, well, I can't work for three days while I move these files because don't work on those files while they're being moved. How can you be prepared to do that? Well, set up a stash of files offline. So find the files you need, say, these are the files that we're gonna migrate over. 
make a copy of those files onto your local drive. Make a copy onto a USB stick, put them on a different server so you can access those files and work offline, work away from that PDM environment while it's happening. Because if you're trying to read and write to that server while we're migrating files, it, it can introduce glitches. It can introduce problems because we're trying to read information that you're trying to write and there's gonna be overlap, there's gonna be clashing there. So work offline, get your coworkers to work offline. If you have to, like turn off your Wi-Fi even. Just say, I, I'm not gonna touch those files on the server. It sounds easy, but it's, it's so critical during the migration that you're prepared to work offline. Because again, if it's only a couple of hours, okay, maybe you take a half day. But if it's gonna run for a few days, be ready to work for a couple of days, not accessing those existing files on the server. And the final step of any migration, so now that the migration has happened, we want to validate that. What can you do to validate it? Well, the first thing you should do is find a subset of files that you know are going to be important and start reviewing those files. Is every file there? Is every folder there? If not, okay, was that intentionally left behind or did something happen? Did the network blink and, and it, didn't, it, it didn't come over? That's why we do our test migrations is to make sure that we get everything, to make sure that we can say, okay, something was weird with this file path. Ah, someone put an ampersand in it. Well, we should probably clean that up. We wanna look at our references. So when we open up those files, are the broken references? Were they there in the first place? Because you might say, hey, this file has five broken references. Okay, we open up the original file, five broken references. Technically, it migrated okay, but if that's part of the test migration, maybe we wanna clean those up first because then we can say, okay, now we bring it over. Hey, there's no working references, now we're happy. We wanna look at our data cards. Did the description property update properly? Did the material property get pulled in? Did the customer field get pulled in? Is the part number reading the right serial number? Things that we want to review. We want to understand not only did our files come over, but did our metadata, did our descriptors, did all of that come over the way it's supposed to? on that same trend of the information about the files, is it in the right workflow? You know, did I, did I get a SOLIDWORKS part that's supposed to be in the engineering workflow, get put in the engineering change workflow? Okay, we wanna understand why, we wanna understand what happened. Did everything go in the right state? Maybe your work in progress folder didn't get put in the work in progress, it got put in the obsolete folder or the obsolete state. Okay? We wanna figure out why, what happened? Oh, there was a checkbox that you had clicked in your custom properties. We don't want that to be true. So now it's part of the second migration, the, production migration, we want to check that. Lots of things to check and we do have a validation worksheet that, you know, we always encourage people to run through, uh, but ha have a list of steps. And if you don't have that list of steps, we have that worksheet that you can use, but making sure you've got a process to say, here's this file. Yes, it works the way I expect it to move on to the next one. So as a quick review, what did we talk about? Well, what is a migration? It's moving files. It's copying files from one existing location to a SOLIDWORKS PDM environment, PDM standard, PDM professional, that's up to you. You can do a migration for either one. It's also mapping our data, mapping our file properties to our data cards, as well as mapping them to the proper workflow. What should you be bringing for your migration? Well, it needs to be whatever you need to do your job effectively. That might be every file, it might be a subset of files, but we need to understand what that looks like. We need to understand, can we bring over our history? Are all of our files in the same location? We want to understand all of that so that when we do this migration, we understand what, what we expect. As we're preparing to really do this migration, we want to understand what does our data look like by using things like our scan tool to look for broken references, to look for duplicates, to look for uh, long file path names. We want to be able to see all of that so we can understand what is our data. And then we want to clean it up as far as getting ready for the migration. Get that data as clean as it can be because the cleaner that data is going into PDM, the cleaner it's going to be as you access it inside of PDM and making sure our servers are as well connected as they can be, making sure that they're plugged in to the ethernet and not on the Wi-Fi. We want it to be a stable, clean connection if we can do that. And during the migration, it takes time. So make sure that we get the right people on the phone or in the room to help us get connected. And once it's going, be prepared to work offline for the duration of that migration, because we don't want you, you don't want to, be accessing files that are currently on that server. Instead, you wanna be working in a stash that is your own. That way you can make changes and not worry that you might be interrupting something going out to migration. And finally, we wanna check it. We wanna go back and check our work, just like our teachers in school used to say, if you finish your test early, go back and check your work because the worst thing we could do is say, yep, I think this worked great. And you guys say, yeah, everything's exactly as we expected, but nobody checked. 
we want to check our work. We want to say like, yes, this test migration is here. So we can say, here's what went wrong and here's what we want to do to correct it. That's why we do test migrations. Makes a lot of sense. So with that, that is how you can best get ready for your migration. Understand your data is a critical point. And then while we're doing the migration, making sure we've got a good connection and that you're not going to be overwriting your files, that's going to be pretty important. So thank you all so much for listening. I, I hope you guys got something out of this. 